Hey YouTubers, Dre Crawford here, Recovery One Drones. I put out a little introductory uh, video earlier in the week, I think it was Monday, uh, of me receiving my uh, DJI Maverick Enterprise Advance. And I promised I would do a follow-up video once I got a chance to do all the updates, because there's been about several updates this week, but we'll cover that later on. But I wanted to go over some things about the, uh, the, uh, the uh, drone itself. Uh, talking about the the big thing about the drone is the updated thermal sensor and camera on the drone. It is now at the same equivalency equivalency of uh, the uh, H220 uh, camera, which comes on the Matrice level drones, and it's definitely right there with the uh, Autel Evo drone, which is at 64 times 512, 30 hertz uh, frame rate. In thermal mode, it gives you 16 uh, level zoom. And what I found out is that while you're flying, videotaping, both cameras are recording at the same time. So you just don't just have just the thermal camera recording or just the RGB camera recording. Both cameras are continuously recording when you're in record mode, which comes to advantage. And I'll show you samples of that as we go on. Uh, other than that, the regular camera, there's nothing to write home about, but this is a work drone. This is not a, uh, a, a camera drone for cinematic shots. This is what I, I would put it as just a work drone. It is there to really do inspection work, and, uh, and that's about what it is built for. Uh, overall, the basic RGB camera uh, does do 4K at 30 frames per second, but you lose uh, your zooming ability when you go to 4K level. So at 1080p, you can get up to uh, 16 times optical and up to 32 digital, which, uh, which basically tells you that you want to stay in the optical side of the zoom. That is what the clearest picture you're going to get. Once you start getting to digital zoom on um, pretty much any camera, you start getting artifacts, you start getting a blur, and everything else starts occurring. Okay, let's move on down the road uh, a little further. As I take off my flight, you'll see here I'm approaching a, uh, a solar farm for one of the local companies uh, close by where I live. It's about maybe almost an acre of land that it sits on. And uh, you'll see where I, I stop here. I set up the, uh, the camera for recording and then you'll see me switch it over to uh, dual mode on the controller. Okay and I continue my flight. Now what you see here, obviously you can compare both things, which gives a big advantage by being able to have a split screen. Having that split screen enables you to see things on a regular RGB camera side that may not be as clear on the thermal side, especially uh, obstacles that you may run into as far as uh, telephone wires and all that kind of stuff that will not show up on your thermal but you can still see through the uh, regular RGB. So it's good to have both of those simultaneously on your screen. Uh, could, could lead to unintentional uh, incidents or accidents in the long run. Now right now I'm using the, uh, the black with the white hot spots uh, version of this. It has a color palette of about, uh, I think it's close to about 16 different color palettes you can use depending upon the situation and how you want to interpret the uh, data that, you, that you're shooting. Now what I will do down the road is uh, show you close-ups, well, 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 even here with the solar array. Uh, you see where I zoomed in and I also will raise the drone up to about 400 feet and zoom in and zoom out. Because that was one of the knocks on the uh, the previous model, the, the uh, DJI uh, Maverick uh, Enterprise Dual, was that uh, you had to fly fairly low, I would say 200 feet and below, to uh, get a good, sharp, detailed image of the ground. Well, you'll see here that uh, even at 400 feet, that you still get a sharp, very sharp image of what's on the ground, even the thermal mode. And like I say, I'll, I'll break it down to you, uh, show you just the thermal camera on screen 
and then I'll show you the RGB footage on screen also. And I'm basically using this white uh, hot uh, formula here. Uh, it, it basically looks like a black and white picture. So uh, it, it is an impressive uh, thermal camera. I have to admit I have not used thermal uh, before on a drone uh, other than night vision, which I use in the military, which it doesn't even compare to this. Uh, compared to the dates when I was in the military into now. So uh, I'm sure technology has pushed everything way further than what it was back in my day. Uh, moving forward, we're going to come up on a uh, grain tower here of a local facility by me. And I'm going to leave it in zoom mode, fly as close as I feel comfortable at first, back it out, and then you'll see me re-zoom again, get a little closer to give you an idea of... Uh, the detail that you can see at the various levels. I've been pushing in all the way into the digital mode and you'll see where the picture starts to get a little grainy and then I'll back it back out, do a little orbit around it and go from there. The next thing I want to talk about is the, uh, the smart controller. Uh, the Maverick Enterprise Advance comes with a smart controller and I never had a smart control before. I've used Crystal Skies so the picture itself, I'm used to. Excellent picture, no problems there. I think what DJI just did in this week with their firmware update of the smart controller is probably one of the biggest game changers they have done probably over the last uh, two to three years, including drones. I mean, they put out some drones in the last year that have been very impressive, but the smart controller was almost about to see its life expectancy to end it was not for this firmware update that just came out. And with this firmware update, the smart controller has now been able to control not just two drones, but possibly up to about six or seven drones, depending upon what you have in your inventory. It not only uh, controls the Maverick Enterprise Advance, but it also controls uh, the Maverick Air S that just came out this week and the Maverick Air. And it also is backwards compatible with the Phantom 4 uh, version 2 drones. So that's quite impressive because this uh, having a smart control, like everybody says who's, who's done reviews on before, it is an instant setup in the air under two minutes. You can be in the air ready to go. By the time you put the battery in, power up, that smart control is powering up, it pairs up right away, and you're ready to fly. It's just that quick. So I think DJI has really stepped up to the plate and uh, I won't say hit a home run, but they definitely got a double or triple on this one. So I take my, I give them a tip of the hat on that with the firmware update, which we all know that the uh, firmware is always the biggest thing in updating any of their equipment. It's just a matter of just firmware updates. Uh, along that line with the drone itself, the Maverick Enterprise Advance, it does have the uh, ADS system on it, so it will notify your aircraft in the area that do put out a signal as, as the same as with the uh, Mavic Air and the Air S and so forth. So that, that, that comes built into it and it would not surprise me uh, as we start to get towards that remote ID that uh, there, there could be possible uh, firmware updates to uh, support remote ID here in the United States. Uh, I believe that should be the way DJI should approach this, if all possible, because I am a firm believer that they, the, the technology inside these drones is there for them to send out a signal. So I don't, other than doing a, a, a firmware update, I don't think that uh, there should be a exterior or accessory to uh, put on these drones, because to me, all you're doing is hurting the uh, aerodynamics of the drone, and also you're hurting the flight time of the drones uh, by putting on these uh, additional accessories uh, for remote ID. But you know, time will tell and then we'll find out what the FAA will finally finalize when it comes to that point and see what, how DGI responds. And that's when we can go from there. Recovery One Drone. Let us be your eye in the sky.